Welcome to Module 2 of Ganesh 3311. This is going to be the first real module where we'll actually start covering um, actual academic content. Uh, today's uh, material that we're going to talk about is a personal favorite of mine, and that is skeletal muscle. Uh, just a quick background, uh, my background in muscle um, has existed since uh, I was a PhD student, uh, and my interests really lie on how uh, uh, different conditions can either promote muscle gain, uh, such as resistance exercise training, or conditions that uh, um, induce muscle wasting. Uh, things that we've looked at have been um, ICU acquired weakness, uh, cancer, uh, I've looked at diabetes, um, and then uh, a lot of my PhD was spent looking at uh, at how spaceflight uh, actually causes muscle atrophy. Um, so. Uh, in order to kind of get to that level of research, I think the important part is to make sure that everyone has a really great foundation in very basic skeletal muscle physiology, um, both at the basic physiology level and then as we'll slowly progress into the exercise physiology level. And that's really the goal of this module today is to give you a very brief um, solid background on um, how skeletal muscle is made up, the pieces, and how they kind of all work together in order to do something pretty amazing, if you think about it, which is to all contract um, in a very specific manner such that uh, we can produce very controlled and regulated movements. Again, just think about that for a second. It's pretty awesome uh, that we're able to do that. So, Let's get started. So again, we're covering the structure and function of skeletal muscle here in module two, the first of um, this class. Uh, so the objectives, uh, mainly, I'm gonna break this into several parts. We're gonna start with the structure and function of muscle, then we're gonna um, get into a little bit of muscle fiber types, and finally we'll end with the sliding filament theory of how muscle actually contracts. So for the first part, uh, what we really need to make sure that you get and understand is know um, the connective tissues that are going to be uh, playing a major role in uh, kind of creating the form of skeletal muscle so that we can kind of create the synchronous contraction. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, what I think are some cool things about what makes the skeletal muscle fiber much more unique than uh, most of your normal cells. And then last but not least, uh, you'll need to be able to identify the components of the sarcomere. Okay. If you don't know what the sarcomere is yet, don't worry, we'll teach you. All right, so uh, let's get uh, just a broad overview of muscle in general. So the muscle uh, uh, makes up a large portion of the human body. About 600 skeletal muscles uh, make up about 40 to 50% of the body weight. Um, and again, the uh, really important part of this, if you think about it, is just uh, the idea of living, right? So we are able to generate locomotion so that we can move, uh, we can go out and exercise, we can um, do anything, all done by contraction of muscles, and of course living uh, with the aspect of uh, the diaphragm muscle uh, contracting, which is responsible for breathing. Um, it is also an important metabolic uh, tissue such that uh, we can create hate, heat when we are cold. So if you have ever wondered why uh, when you get cold you shiver, what that is is essentially just the muscles contracting over and over again uh, to um, increase heat production and uh, warm your body. And then uh, something that is uh, sometimes maybe a little bit forgotten, but the tongue is um, a muscle, um, and so we can use that to um, communicate. We have in general uh, three different types of uh, muscle in the body. Uh, what we're only going to really focus on is skeletal muscle today. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the other th three, uh, but we'll get into cardiac muscle later and uh, only a little bit of smooth muscle. So skeletal muscle um, is, I think, what most people think of when we say muscle, right? It's attached to bones when it contracts. It moves the bones in a lever arm angle such that uh, we can then produce movement. Uh, it um, is, uh, sets it apart from um, the majority of other tissues and um, all three, the other two muscle fiber types, smooth and cardiac muscle, in that skeletal muscle is completely voluntary controlled in action. Uh, again, which sets it apart um, such that your brain can then send a signal to your muscle to cause it con to contract. Uh, the next kind is uh, smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is found in, uh, in general in um, places such as organs, uh, such as your stomach and blood vessels. Um, and uh, it has, you know, some random different functions. So, uh, for example, your bladder is, uh, um, is lined with some smooth muscle. Um, 
you have smooth muscle in your intestines so that you can uh, move and digest food. Uh, you can regulate blood flow with smooth muscle, which is a really important um, factor. Uh, in this situation, though, smooth muscle is controlled by um, involuntary um, actions. So the autonomic nervous system is really what's going to be regulating the contraction and relaxation of um, smooth muscle. So you can't tell your um, arteries that they need to relax. Uh, they need some type of uh, involuntary signal. Uh, last is the cardiac muscle. Uh, the, uh, this is muscle fibers that work to um, um, pump blood in uh, your heart. Of course, that's the major organ. Um, it is, again, also controlled involuntary. Uh, you can't uh, tell your heart to speed up or slow down. Uh, only physiological changes can, can do that. Um, so uh, let's then get into how a muscle is made and um, how it works. So if we uh, look here to the slide uh, on the screen here, what we'll see here is this is kind of the connective tissue that, that surrounds the skeletal muscle. So first, um, I like to start at the top. We have our tendon. Uh, we can kind of describe a tendon of, um, is the uh, connective tissue that connects the uh, skeletal muscle to the bone so that when the muscle contracts, we can then move that lever arm of the bone to produce some type of movement. Uh, then the entire muscle belly, so if we think of one uh, specific muscle, so uh, let's say, for example, um, the gastrocnemius. So in this case, we uh, surround all of this muscle with kind of a level of um, um, of uh, connective tissue. Uh, this is what we uh, term the uh, epi epimyceum. Uh, epi you can say lots of ways. I'm an epimyceum guy. Um, just depends on the Texas accent. Um, so that surrounds the entire muscle. We then can uh, break that entire muscle down into kind of smaller, big uh, chunks of bundles of fibers. Uh, we surround this by this middle lo level of, of uh, connective tissue called uh, perimyceum. Uh, this is made up of collagen and elastic fibers uh, and uh, kind of, again, breaks down uh, uh, one big muscle into several different components. So you can see this, com this uh, skeletal muscle fiber has one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, if you conclude the one that's coming out of here, um, um, different groups of uh, muscles that are broken down to the paramyceum. These little, each of these little groups that we see here um, are what we call fascicles or the, um, 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 so that we can then uh, break those down and then those go even further. So uh, ultimately the uh, fascicle is then surrounded by another third layer of connective tissue called the endomyceum, which is responsible for surrounding individual single muscle fibers. So those are your, your three layers, and then we can actually break out this single muscle fiber then into myofibrils, which is what we'll get into with the sarcomere. Myofibrils are just kind of the packing of the protein, and you bundle all of those up. Uh, by this endomyceum to make a skeletal muscle. All right, so again, here's uh, the same uh, review, just a quick review again. Uh, we can start from the back and go forward. So we have our myofibrils, which are kind of these um, organization of sarcomeres uh, in a row. We pack a whole bunch of myofibrils together, uh, and then they are wrapped up um, by the um, endomyceum. The endomyceum then creates what we can, would consider a single skeletal muscle fiber. If we put a whole bunch of single muscle fibers together, wrap them up by the um, perimyceum, then we will create what is called a, um, a fasciculus or a fasciculi. And then if we put a whole bunch of uh, uh, fascicles uh, together, then we will ultimately uh, get an entire muscle, which is surrounded by the epimyceum connective tissue, which holds them all together. Um, these all come together at the end to uh, form the very stiff connective tissue called the tendon that attaches to the bone. So what is the role of this kind of connective tissue? Uh, it has several. One, it stabilizes and supports the components of skeletal muscle, surrounds the muscle at each little level, and I think the most important part is it allows and aids in the transmission of force. 
Uh, when we start to talk about types of muscle contractions, one of the things that we'll talk about is eccentric contraction, and that uh, is going to talk about uh, one of the things that we're going to engage is this elastic component. So if you think about uh, this connective tissue, it does have a stretchiness to it, uh, and so it kind of surrounds and encapsulates and keeps skeletal muscle all together. Uh, I like this picture here. This is, again, out of your book. Uh, this is um, a nice little uh, cross-sectional image of a skeletal muscle. So you see kind of each uh, individual skeletal muscle fiber uh, here, and we can actually kind of pick out um, the endomyceum and the perimyceum. So the perimyceum is the big uh, connective tissue here, the, um, which is responsible for, again, kind of creating a bundle of muscle fibers. And the endomyceum is this very thin layer of connective tissue that surrounds each skeletal muscle fiber. Okay, so now let's get into, um, again, kind of starting at the whole level, and we're going to work our way down into a very microscopic view. Um, and now we're going to move into skeletal muscle um, fibers. Um, myofibers is another name for them, uh, but uh, again, this is something that, that I think is cool, and one of the reasons that, that I love studying muscle is that muscle cells are, are really unique. One, they have a unique shape, right? They aren't your standard uh, biology cell. Um, instead, they are very, very long tubular um, muscle cells. And indeed, these um, muscle cells can be extremely long. It is um, not completely uncommon for uh, a single muscle fiber to transverse the entire length of a skeletal muscle. So we have these uh, very large uh, tubular muscle um, fibers. Um, they do contain, you know, all the other membranes that, or all the other organelles that, that these cells do. Uh, mitochondria, the Golgi apparatus, uh, they contain nucleus, um, and et cetera. However, one thing that sets them apart is that uh, they don't just contain one nuclei, they contain many. You'll see here in this picture, illustrates it very well. So the myofiber is in pink, and then this is stained such that the nuclei take on a uh, blue color. So you'll see that each muscle fiber, this one has two in this picture, uh, this one has at least three just on the bottom of this picture, that they have several different um, nuclei on each fiber, um, and they are located kind of, again, outside squeezed on the periphery. That's because we have all these uh, proteins, which we'll talk about what those are, squeezed into the muscle as tight as we can, and so the only place that we can put these very large nuclei are then on the outside. Um, the proteins, and we'll talk about what these proteins are in the next slide, but they produce a nice striped um, uh, appearance. So if you look at these, again, under a microscope, I've spent lots and lots of hours looking at muscle under a microscope. Uh, they look exactly like this, nice, pretty uh, striped, striated muscles produced by alternating light and dark bands. Um, they are able to contract voluntarily, which is Again, a pretty awesome thing if you think about it. So our brain can send an electrical signal um, down to our muscles and can tell them to contract, which is different from all the other uh, muscle types. Uh, sometime, I don't know when, but muscle physiologists decided that we needed to be um, nice and fancy and kind of create our own words for things. And so uh, instead of using cell membrane, we now call it the sarcolemma, which is um, uh, specifically serves the exact same functions as uh, the cell membranes of other cells. However, one thing um, is that it is special is that, and as opposed to in your biology cell just making a perfect circle, that this one actually dips down deep into um, the skeletal muscle. Uh, we'll talk about why that is important at the end of the lecture, but it's just important to remember that the, um, that the cell membrane or sarcolemma actually dips down uh, deep into the muscle fiber, uh, and we call this a T-tubule. That's the um, definition for that. So skeletal muscles also have uh, what we would consider uh, satellite cells. Satellite cells are important because they are essentially the stem cell of the uh, skeletal muscle world. So they are what, what we can actually use to create new cells if, if damage is to happen um, or do some type of repair during muscle exercise. Uh, these satellite cells um, are named because they aren't actually in the muscle, um, but they are kind of really close. So they lie outside of the cell membrane of the muscle, which is the sarcolemma, but underneath the um, endomyceum or that uh, connective tissue that, again, surrounds uh, each muscle fiber. Uh, 
So now that's a muscle fiber. Let's go ahead and move into the microstructure of uh, skeletal muscle fibers. So uh, you can see here, here's our satellite cell. Again, this, here's our connective tissue, our endomyceum uh, that makes um, one single muscle fiber. And then each muscle fiber can be broken down into a myofibril, which is uh, just the um, uh, sarcomeres uh, put in a row. Um, so um, myofibrils, again, can be divided into sarcomeres. Sarcomeres. Um, are, uh, as you'll see defined and, and you'll read in your book, is what we would consider the uh, smallest contractile unit of a skeletal muscle. And the reason that this is, is this is actually, as we get into the sliding filament theory, this is how skeletal muscle is going to contract, is that these sarcomeres are actually going to pull together. So how do we define sarcomeres? So um, <coughs> our sarcomeres are made up of both myosin and actin. Myosin and actin are the two key proteins in skeletal muscle that allow us to create contractions. Uh, the myosin are thick filaments, dictated here by uh, a very thick pink line, and our thin filaments are our blue line, and that is actin. Uh, this is, again, what makes the nice striated picture, right? So you can see that these thick, dark myosin filaments will make um, a visually dark skeletal muscle fiber when there is no thick filaments, only thin filaments, then that would be a light structure and therefore that's how we can get a nice pretty um, striated skeletal muscle. So let's go ahead and break down actin and myosin first and then we will uh, finish up of how this sarcomere is actually works. So uh, first we'll start with actin. So actin is kind of um, a series of globular um, proteins, as you can see here, depicted by circles. They create a long line and then they intertwine together um, in order to uh, create an actin molecule. My uh, personal kind of view of these is if you think of these as two pearl necklaces kind of wrapped around each other um, in a strand. That's really what this looks like. And I think this picture here out of your textbook does a really good job of demonstrating that. Um, the um, actin uh, molecule um, is also combined with two other regulatory proteins that are going to be important. So the first is this protein here, which is called troponin. Uh, troponin is actually made up of three subunits. The first subunit, troponin I, is responsible for binding to the actin itself. Then we have troponin T, which binds to um, another regulatory protein called tropomyosin. And finally, troponin C, which is able to bind calcium and will be an important part of uh, muscle contraction at the end of the lecture. So uh, let's expand here, though, on troponin T. So this troponin uh, is bound to not only um, actin itself through troponin I, but it's bound to a third regulatory protein, um, and this is the major regulatory protein called tropomyosin. What tropomyosin does, it is a thin rope-like structure, as you can see here, that intertwines again through kind of the pearl necklace of actin. And at rest, what it does is it sits here on the site between that, um, that actin will try to bind to um, myosin in. And so uh, as long as it's covered up by uh, tropomyosin, then it is impossible for myosin to bind the actin and cause a um, contraction. So again, uh, three proteins make up this uh, kind of actin complex. You have the major component, which is actin, which is um, our big red balls and contain the binding site for myosin. Then we have our tropomyosin. Uh, tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is a regulatory kind of thin like rope protein that goes through the act molecule and uh, covers up the myosin binding site. And finally, we have the, um, the protein that is going to be kind of responsible for making this all work together and moving things, which is troponin, which is responsible for not only binding calcium, but also moving tro uh, tropomyosin out of the way when it comes time to contract. Again, we'll see this in action at the end of the lecture. So if we look at what does uh, a molecule of myosin look like. So I consider this to kind of look like um, a golf club with two heads. Uh, we have a, a globular head that is made up of the enzyme myosin ATPase. 
uh, which essentially tells us how fast we can contract. So the ATPase is going to be responsible for uh, cleaving ATP, hence the name ATPase. Uh, anytime you see ACE after the, the term, then that means uh, it's some type of enzyme. Uh, so in this, this case, uh, myosin will cleave ATP. Uh, and then we have the tails, which are kind of intertwined here to form this really dense, thick filament or the base of the golf club <clears throat> in order to be able to contract. All right, so let's look then at the structure of a sarcomere. So the structure of a sarcomere goes from what we consider one Z-line to another Z-line. Uh, and we can kind of see these, the, the Z-lines are these very thick, dense uh, group of proteins that essentially allow other proteins, specifically actin, to be able to bind to um, and attach so that they can um, essentially anchor uh, these um, small sarcomeres. So um, our actin molecules extend uh, inwards towards the center of the, um, uh, in towards the center of the sarcomere from the Z line, uh, as you can see here. So this is a really great representation, our actin, kind of our uh, pearl necklaces surrounded by our tropomyosin rope here. Our other filament is the, uh, uh, the thick filament or the myosin. The myosin is going to start from the middle. Again, similar to having the Z-line on the outside for the actin to bind to, we have this middle um, level of proteins called the M-line by which uh, myosin can attach. And then we can also just kind of take a look and classify these areas by how these um, actually look from just looking at a microscope. And that's essentially what um, a lot of uh, people have done uh, and, and have shown you. So we, again, if we look here in the electron microscope view, we can see here is our, um, our uh, Z-disc, uh, which again, those proteins that the uh, actin is going to bind to. We see a light zone on each of these, followed by a dark zone here in the middle, and then another light zone. So how can we describe these? So first we can talk about the A-band, the A band is considered where the full length of the thick filament. So if we think about these thick filaments, uh, it's going to be dark because light doesn't get through them very uh, easily. Indeed, just a random trivia note, uh, A band stands for anisotropic, which means uh, it, light doesn't get through it, and therefore it's dark. Uh, hence, the A band is the dark band. We also have the I band. The I band uh, is the light band here, and, and this is made up of thin but no thick filaments, and it extends from one A band of one sarcomere to the A band of the next. So again, I band is where there are no thick filaments, and therefore light gets through relatively easy and shows up bright. Um, again, if you think about this from a microscope, the way this is working is a light source is pushing uh, light up uh, from underneath through there. So if light gets through easy, it shows up light. If it doesn't get through very easy in these really thick filaments, then it shows up dark. Okay. Um, and then there is um, a nice overlap. However, you'll see here, this illustrates it a little bit better. You'll see here that uh, there is at least some area in which no overlap exists uh, between thick and thin filaments. And you can see that that means it's a little bit lighter shade uh, than uh, the uh, A band, which is where uh, the overlap occurs, and we call this the H zone. The H zone uh, is simply defined as where there is thick but no thin filaments. All right, so to give a, a really quick review, so again, uh, our skeletal muscle uh, um, is made up of uh, three layers of connective tissue. Uh, that come down. So we have the epimyceum, which uh, covers up the entire skeletal muscle. Uh, we then break those down into fascicles, which are created by the perimyceum going in and surrounding kind of these uh, different bundles um, of, of fibers. Uh, then the perimyceum is then further bundled down by the endomyceum, which ultimately just covers a single skeletal muscle fiber, uh, which then produces what we consider to be the, um, the single muscle fiber. We can further look microscopically at this muscle fiber by breaking it down to a myofibril, which is just um, an organization of sarcomeres or the structural unit of skeletal muscle uh, contraction. The smallest unit 
uh, that is able to contract, which is made up of actin and myosin that we can then break down into different regions based on uh, their look. So we have our Z-disc, which is the line of proteins that the actin uh, bind to. We have our M-line, which is the uh, middle of the sarcomere in which the thick filaments from myosin bind to, and then we can break off there. So the A-bands here are the uh, uh, really dark bands that contain thick and thin filaments uh, in the sarcomere. We have our H zone, which is thin filament or thick filaments only. Sorry, uh, no thin filaments to be found. And then we have our I band, which is uh, thin filaments only, no overlap between the two. Uh, so that closes up for this video here on the structure of muscle. Uh, in the uh, next video below, after you do a couple activities, um, we're going to get into skeletal muscle fiber types.